Hello everyone and welcome back to Banjo Kazooie on the Nintendo 64. I'm one well sheep yet again and today ladies and gentlemen we are finishing off the last of Rocky, Rusty, Rusty Bucket Bay. Yeah, it's all been. And uh, to start things off, basically for the sequence of the level, we're going to be jumping into all of these little containers. Inside each of these containers, there's usually a very fixed camera angle, making it extremely difficult to figure out where you're walking, where you're meant to be walking. And I clearly hit them. That is bull. That is a bullocks game. That is not correct. I should have killed him. But yeah, it's a very fixed camera angle, so walking inside these containers can be a little bit obnoxious. To just to find out where you're meant to go, where you're everything is. It's very easy to miss items in here, ladies and gentlemen. So just look in all our nooks and crannies when you get the chance to, and we are away! Now there are three of these uh, containers you need to look into, two of which are open from the front, and one of which, as you can tell, is completely shut closed. How are we meant to get inside that one? Because I just mentioned we're going inside all three. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going in from above! Which uh, is easy. It's more. It's easier. And you, it's easier again too. Let's just say that. Anyway, this is a little bit interesting thing that not many people that I know of know about in this game. If you kill all these TNT mooks by simply running around in a circle around them, waiting for them to explode, what will happen is this will appear. An extra life. You get an extra life as a reward. I would have preferred a Jiggy personally, but uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty interesting reward. I'm quite, I quite enjoy that. You know, you do a bit of a tricksy challenge, and you get something for your troubles. It's a, uh, it's a nice thing. Like, granted, the the extra lives are really pointless. I, I, I've stated this more than enough times in this playthrough, and I don't really want to. I don't really want to beat at a dead horse or something, but. Honestly, the play. The, there's just so many. <laughs> there's, there's no reason for extra lives. I just can't reiterate it enough. Uh, but I digress. You might think there's pretty much nothing inside this one particular area of the stage, you know, th this one cavern, because it looks like there's nothing but red feathers. But if you listen closely, there's a Jinjo. So I'll be sure to collect him and. Leave. We can now pretty much leave. That's the only reason we're inside here. There's no notes, no jiggies, no other major collectibles. There's just one Jinjo, so that's all you need to do, you know. Make sure you collect the Jinjo before leaving. Of course, unfortunately, we need to leave through the top, which means we have to do platforming. Oh no, not in my platform game. Or you could be like me, and you could be an absolute numpty and just flabble, flibble, flabble, flibble, flobble around the entire stage. Honestly, this is probably one of my slowest playthroughs of this level. As most playthroughs I have of this stage, it, it, things usually go by a lot quicker, you know? Uh, but I digress. Anyway, over there, that's where we went before to get hold of that Jinjo. So you might be wondering, what's left to do? Well, we got one Jinjo left to pick up. And, of course, as you probably can tell already, we haven't collected any of the honeycomb notes. Honeycomb notes? Empty honeycomb pieces yet. Do not fret, ladies and gentlemen. Because we are about to get one of the Jinjos and one of the Honeycomb pieces, I believe, unless we I decide to leave them for last. Well, I know we're, I know we're getting the Jinjo right now, because the Jinjo, like I said, is right over in this god-awful corner of the stage where there's no... The, you can't see this thing from the bridge, it's very annoying. Ah, hey, Snacker, I haven't seen you in a long while. Yes, I fancy some barren bird with some caviar. Mm. <laughs> I love Snacker. But anyway, just pop inside this hallway and we'll have access to a honeycomb piece. We need to come in here for the honeycomb piece, so uh, yeah, just be, be careful. And even though this water looks clean, it still has the same, you know, it still... It still has the same thing that the other water from the main level itself has as well. It looks clean, but trust me, just swimming on top will still lose your air. Swimming underneath will still lose your air at double the speed you're meant to, so... Just be a bit careful of the water. What can I say? You gotta avoid the water like you oughta. <laughs> Down in me oughta. Sorry. Sorry. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know where I heard that saying from, but ever since I heard that saying, I've been saying it every time I, I start saying water. Because every now and then I have a tendency to speak 
to say water, but then not pronounce the T. So it comes out like water. And I don't know where that's come from, because it's not a Welsh trait. In fact, most of the Welsh people are here just like, Oh, you fetch us the water, will you, but? All right. But means, but it's Welsh slang for friend, by the way, if you're wondering. So, uh, yeah. All right, but how's it going? Tell you what, but I went to the movie theater the other day. It was an absolutely amazing movie, right? I tell you what. <laughs> you see that? I, I love the way the Welsh sounds. We have a very interesting culture, you know. Oh, leave me alone! Leave me alone! Leave me alone! <laughs> for some reason, snack is confined to that one area of the map, though. So, for the most part, as long as you get away from that cage, he's never gonna come out and try and hurt you. So, you gotta be just take. Take comfort in that fact, you know, ladies and gentlemen, just take comfort. Although now that we've gotten everything on the outside of the stage completely, it's time for us to go into the dreaded ending room. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys who played this game have been waiting for this part. Well, fortunately for you, I've only shown off one fail, and I've gotten pretty good at doing this engine room parts throughout the years, and the only time you, I really ever fail at doing the engine room in this playthrough these days is when I, um, it's usually when, whenever I try to go for the mumbo tokens, because there's a couple of mumbo tokens in this room that are on the sides, collecting those things are a death wish. I've gone to the point now where I can beat the engine room without a problem. But the one time I try to get a mumbo token, oh no, 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 the game hates me. Not this mumbo token, this mumbo token by here is fine. Chris, this room's foreboding though, it's terrifying, I'd hate to work here. Oh, the engine's down again, Larry, you have to do all this platforming again. Oh, why me, boss? It's dangerous down there. Because you're the platforming expert out of our crew and members. Oh. Like, seriously, if the engine breaks down, do the crew have to, like, platform their way across all this... ...this nonsense just to fix whatever's the causing the thing to be broke? I'd be terrified to work in this place. Christ! The United Kingdom's work system's getting worse and worse by the day! Are there no unions here? Come on! <laughs> Uh, but anyway, I digress. Just jump on up here, and if you go to the left, there is a... A thing. A thing. Yeah, there's a thing. There's an extra life if you need it. And I don't know if the extra life respawns. Hopefully it does. I think it does, actually, because then you'll have infinite tries. Again, making the extra lives completely pointless, because why would you need... <sighs> Sorry. Sorry. Anyway, this by you is mainly a timing puzzle, and getting through here is trickier than you would expect, because depth perception is not your friend, you know, ladies and gentlemen. It, it took me so long to get the timing down with this, like, playing this as a kid, I cried. I, I honestly cried when I walked into this room, because first things first, the room's terrifying. Which doesn't help. And second off... No, the room's still terrifying, what can I say? But anyway, the moment you hit the second one of these switches, the entire, you know, there's going to be a timer, you know, so leave and hit the switch last. You don't do everything else you want to before hitting that switch. And now that we've gotten 100 notes, I'm kind of safe, so I don't need to worry about things too much. But yeah, collecting these mumbo tokens, is uh, it's a death wish. I, I just, uh, I hate those mumbo tokens. So yeah. I died so many times just because I tried to get the two Mumbo Tokens. Eventually, I wisened up and said screw it because those Mumbo Tokens are going to kill me more than anything else, so... Yeah. Word to the wise, ignore them. You don't need them to beat the game, ignore them. For fo for folk's sake, Harry Potter. For folk's sake, Harry, a fucking wizard. <laughs> oh, I love that video so much. But anyway, just need to platform through this room again. And there is a jiggy on the far end of the room, which I completely ignored the first time through it, so... I'm gonna collect that pretty much right away now, as soon as I get to it. Be sure to pick up the jiggy, because you don't want to platform through this stage more than you need to. You know, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah, those things do respawn. See, I came in here with seven lives. I have three. <laughs> so yeah, ignore those mumble tokens. They they're not worth the trouble. They will kill you. Kind of depressing, but 
Them's the bricks. I'm so glad there's nothing as dickish as those Mumbo Tokens placed in Banjo Tooie, though. They kind of learnt their lesson, I think, with this room. Although with Banjo Tooie, there's, there's an entire other set of issues the game has, so, uh, yay. I keep referencing Banjo Tooie in this playthrough, and I don't even know if I'm gonna LP it anytime soon. Like, it's on my LP list, but. Because of how far in advance I do these playthroughs, it could be months and months. It could be even next year until I actually start tackling Banjo Tooie, so. Uh, but I digress. Anyway, the moment you hit the switch, try time hitting the switch perfectly so you can just run across. These things will slow down and come to a screeching halt. Which means we need to leg it, so get your talent trot out and leg it. Go as fast as you physically can. There is not much time to get through here. Fortunately, a lot of the things, a lot of the obstacles in this room will stop for you. The only thing that won't stop are these rotating platform thingies that I don't even know what they're for. So trust me, go as fast as you can. Be Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, be Sonic. Gotta go fast! Well, That's all she wrote, really. And of course, when you come inside this area, be sure to take out those uh, mooks as well on the side of the rooms, because it makes things a little bit quicker with them gone, so you can just simply run past without worrying too much about anything. You know, ladies and gentlemen, just just word of the wise, I have plenty of advice for this level, what can I say? alley -oop. and this is the hardest jiggy in the game, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. As soon as you got this, it's pretty much easy sailing. Bada bing, bada boom, we are done with this world. Oh, thank God. Oh, hearing that victory jingle makes me feel all tingly inside. Oh. It makes my <laughs> it makes my nads feel something special. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's just check the totals quickly and uh, yep, that is everything. Two out of two, ten out of ten, hundred out of hundred. Good, good. It is a shame I didn't actually record my Xbox my Xbox 360 footage of this when I was doing that playthrough because I had to play through this game twice for this LP, ladies and gentlemen, for reasons that I'm going to show off later on, and. I probably could have spliced in the Xbox 360 version for this level in particular just because I did a better job. I beat in like 10 minutes less than I beat her here and I, I don't know what, how, I think it, I think I was just making st less stupid mistakes in the long run. But yeah, we're done. We are done ladies and gentlemen. Oh my, I'm so happy. Now you might be wondering, where is that Jiggy that we spawned from the Gruntilda switch in that level? Well, just swim down all the way to the bottom and in, you know the previous room. Well, because we pushed the switches, that previous room is a little bit more flooded than it was previously. So what we need to do is simply swim up to the top by here and there should be a little, there it is, there's the alcove. Just jump up on the alcove and grab the Jiggy, what can I say? And you see that very ominous looking grate behind us? Well. We can break it. Why am I not breaking it? I don't know. I think I'll break it eventually. I, I, it's, it, I will break that because that leads us to the next Cheeto page, you know, ladies and gents. But here we go. One of the final doors of the castle. It isn't the final door, but this is the final main area, you know, ladies and gents. We are almost done. We are almost. We are almost. We are almost at the very end. Now watch out for these tentacles because they will swipe you. And there is a bit of a timing aspect to get around this safely. As you can tell by here, I have the timing of an angel, so <laughs> I can't get through that. I, I always get hit. It's a nightmare getting through there. But uh, this little ominous room, area, place thing is the entrance to the final world. And like I said, for people, the final world will take me multiple parts. It's a very big level. It's a massive stage. It's one of my favorite stages in the game, but trust me, it is fucking huge. It is fucking huge. <laughs> uh, but anyway, popping down here, there's a mumbo token if you really want to get hold of it and there's that, there is that, mm, yes. Now you might be wondering, where's, where's the where's the jigsaw puzzle for this world? Because honestly, there's I, I can't see any jigsaw puzzle around here. Can you guys see any jigsaw puzzle around here? There was a note door, well, push the switch. This here, ladies and gentlemen, is an area from way earlier back in the game. Now, if you remember when we went to Treasure Trove Cove, there was a bit of a water patch that we could have gone through. Well, in that water patch, 
that leads to that area. So, yeah, we have to go all the way to the very beginning of the game in order to go all the way to the end of the game. What? I know, right? It's insane. Now, it's quite interesting as well because the jigsaw puzzle area far the click clock would a lot of people a lot of people believe it to be actually where the jigs you know the entrance to fungi forest was meant to be and that's purely because fungi forest as you guys expect would expect well it has the same textures as this room we're going into they they have the same textures and of course fungi forest was originally in banjo kazooie of course got moved to banjo uh, banjo donkey kong 64 but uh Again, I'm going to be talking about that sometime in the future, probably when I tackle Donkey Kong 64, which is going to be... Who knows when, because I don't I don't have any any plans to recall that one for ages yet. Anyway, running up here, there's a switch. Time to boop the switch to gain access to the third water level. Now, unlike with the first two, this one's timed. So you need to be quick, and you need to go gain access to the next room of the castle, where Rusty Bucket Bay was, because there was a hidden room in that room. There's a hidden room in that room, so we need to go through this room to get to that room. Mmm, sounds roomy. <laughs> yeah, but simply just swim upwards, and eventually you'll find the entrance. And it does give you a really strict time limit, like I just made it by here, so just be a bit careful trying to find this entrance and uh, climb up to the top. And here's the last Cheeto page of the game. There's only three of this guy throughout the game, and here we go. So yeah, this, um, this final Cheeto cheat that he gives us will double our maximum golden feathers. So uh, yeah, we can use Wonder Wing or Invulnerability for double the time. Woo! <laughs> You're riveting! Yes! Now, I'm not really too... fussed about this one, because the only times I really use Wonder Wing are either against the final boss on very sad areas, or... I'll, I suppose it's useful for the next world, because you, I'm gonna be using Wonder... you know, the invulnerability Wonder Wing move quite a bit in the next level, so... I guess it's kinda helpful. I guess it's kinda helpful. I don't know if I do activate the power-ups right away though, do I? I either activate the power straight off or I activate the power-ups. Like... Just before the final boss, I'm not actually sure. Either way, it's time to make use of these shortcuts we acquired throughout the game. I told you I'd show these things off eventually. At least I think I did. And uh, head on back to Treasure Trove Cove. Because, obviously, like I said, that's why we need to go for the puzzle. What's up, bro? Oh yeah, those Gruntilda minions, I don't know if I mentioned this, they actually, they're actually using uh, Grand Kirkup's voice. So Grand Kirkup voice acts as these guys as well, so every time you hear a rawr, that's Grand Kirkup. <laughs> rawr. <laughs> Miss I had so much fun doing the sound direction in this game. Ah, but I digress, here we go. Finally, the entrance to the last world. And of course the final Bruntilda is also in here as well. I think there might be a Brintilda in the Click Clock Wood room where, you know, where the entrance level is, but don't quote me on that because I'm not actually entirely sure. I don't think you need to speak to all the Brintildas anyway to beat the game, it just helps, just in, you know, it's more of a just in case sort of deal, so let's talk to her. Actually, Brintilda's nickname was Cauldron, but I went to school. I also know that Puget Parrot Puke is her favorite smell. Ew. The old hag's favorite color is dung brown. Oh, you poor tears, your energy is low. I do like this as well. I haven't really brought this up properly. properly. But if you meet bottles or Brentilda, um, and you have low health, they'll recover your health for you. So, you know, you, it's, it's handy if you have low health. They'll help. They'll heal you. They'll help your you and your quest, which I do like. I think I think jam jars, which is the bottles replacement in the second game, will be using doing the same thing for us as well. Why is there a bottles replacement? Well, I'm not gonna spoil that because I don't know when I'm taking on the second game, but I will take it on eventually. But with that, thank you all for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish, and I'll catch you all next time when we take on the final world. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish, and catch you all then. Bye!